Ladies and gentlemen, a lot has happened since the last episode here on the channel covering the absolute craziness with the Star Park CCTV footage. And unraveling, in a sense, the Star Park CCTV and just Star Park in general, the history, the backstory has pretty much so gone crazy. At the point that I'm recording this video, the entire story has come to an end, ending on December 12th of 1995 in some spectacular fashion, I would say. So the question is, is how did we get to this state? How did we get here? It's time to catch you guys up to speed. Strap in. It's going to be a long one. Grab your popcorn and make sure you're subscribed. I'd appreciate it. Also, before we get into anything, I want to give a huge, huge shout out to the very hardworking individuals over here on on the Starkive team. This video and any of the videos that we covered on the channel about the CCTV wouldn't be possible without all of their hard work. Make sure to go check out the link in the description down below. Their channel is so, so useful when it comes to this types of things. So where we last left off, it was November 15th of 1995, and I think it's safe to say things at this point were starting to get a little bit crazy. The discovery of the gems was already discovered by Dynamite and infecting individuals within Star Park, stirring up some craziness. And the cliffhanger I ended off on was Shelly running in to Dynamite on November 14th, and Shelly getting the gem, shooting Dynamite, and killing him dragging his body away even trying to hide it. Now, this did not go by the watching eye of Rick here in the CCTV footage room, the security guard, called landscaping about a dead guy in bushes. They said it wasn't their problem. I don't want to deal with it, so whose problem is it? Now, the situation with Dynamite passing away from Shelly and the body being hid in a bush ended up going on for a few days until our very next update to the security log footage. Checking in with Rick here each day day on November 16th he ends up saying hopefully no one finds out about this then on November 17th you can see he's under some stress not even dating the date itself just drawing a picture of him going crazy but then on the faded November 18th a little bit more is told with this ongoing story where we got an update to the situation here, where Dynamite actually comes back to life. Shelly and Colt discussing the issue, and Dynamite comes out of the bushes as if nothing ended up happening. Of course, Shelly and Colt are afraid because Dynamite came back to life. We also got an update from Rick here on November 18th before the footage was discovered by him saying, look into workers comp. Basically, we got this update from Rick at the very beginning of the day, before the footage was released, the Easter egg, the new footage of Dynamite coming back to life. And you can tell Rick is still very, very stressed out about the situation at hand. But then we pan over to November 19th, where we get another update. Finally got landscaping to look into the bushes. They said there's no body in there. So that's confusing and terrifying at the same exact time. Where could it be? Gotta review the tapes. So at this time, there's already a lot of really interesting theories going on. We already know that a lot of the weird stuff going on at Star Park and the things that are causing individuals in Star Park to do these crazy rash things like shooting each other and fighting each other, getting special abilities, is these gems that were discovered. So it could also be said that these gems could have had a hand in Dynamite coming back to life. I think it's also a cool callback that these gems are kind of turning Star Park into the game that we know and love, play every single day, Brawl Stars, where you can't die in Brawl Stars. You do die, but you respawn. You come back to life, which is, I think, exactly what ended up happening with Dynamite in those bushes. He came back to life as if nothing ended up happening. Now, checking back in with Rick here on the security log journal, it's kind of strange. It's almost like he's oblivious to the situation even unfolding, even though he has access to the tapes. As you can see here on November 20th, he says, well, this isn't going to look good on a resume. While well, at the same time, on November 20th, first we have I wonder how this is going to affect my bonus so it's either he's saying these things about dynamite respawning or coming back to life or it's kind of seeming like he's oblivious to the situation at all almost as if the only info that he has is that dynamite's body is missing so he's still just stressed out about that there's no dead body in the bushes but speaking of November 21st it would be the very next day that we would get an update to the security log the CCTV footage 
an Easter egg time code. Now, if you ask me, this time code is where things really start hitting the fan when it comes to craziness at Star Park. Jackie, obviously succumbing to the gems and its effect on the mental, is running throughout Star Park, making cracks in the ground where gems start to spring up and, I think, effectively bringing these gems to the other people, right? Up until this point, the gems are kind of contained. It's only really affecting a small population within Star Park. However, Jackie's actions here is bringing it to the masses, and it's bringing these gems to the entire park, not just the gems that Dynamite ended up mining up, kind of making it a much bigger problem. For November 22nd, the only bit of updates that we have from Rick is a drawing of Dynamite going crazy, and I think this is an apt description of Star Park in general. From the actions of what Jackie just ended up doing on the 21st, we're seeing some mayhem go down in Star Park, which leads us into the next Easter egg footage on November 22nd. Back to back Easter egg videos. This one is huge. We're already seeing some bad aftermath as to what ended up happening with Jackie. It's even branching to things much like cactuses. Cac die. We have the birthing or the backstory, the origin story of Spike in this video. This is also the very first example of some twisting narratives going on here. We've always assumed that the origin of Spike was in the investor video where a guy shoots a shotgun and makes the whole for Spike's face. But now we see that it's because of a gem got a little bit too close to the cactus. Colt freaks out, starts shooting at it, making the eye holes, and then Spike makes his own mouth, running after Colt in a very scary fashion. Now, like I said before, getting back-to-back -back Easter egg videos, around this time, things are really starting to hit the fan because of what Jackie ended up doing in the park, making these gems spring up from the ground, infecting so so many other individuals and causing havoc. The source of these issues are the gems. We have the update from Rick on November 23rd saying, uh, did that cactus just come to life last night or do I need to stop eating late night burritos before bed? No, dude, that did end up happening. A cactus came to life and that's gonna be the least of your worries in a little bit with Spike. Not only are we getting feedback from the Easter egg videos that things are kind of going crazy in Star Park because of recent events, but we're also seeing that somewhat translated to the security log as well. Up until this point, we've seen just doodles or words, small remarks every single day from Rick, but now we actually have some weird things going on here. On November 24th, we literally have no feedback from Rick. All that we have is this coffee stain being spilled on the book and then some other stains up there on the top and towards the middle as if he tried to clean it. But while this craziness is going down and on the same exact day of the dreaded coffee spill, we have a new Easter egg video discovered. On November 24th, we have an update here. We have some stuff going down in the arcade environment. Dynamite with a gem ends up giving it to a arcade machine, birthing a bit for the very first time. They're duking it out in the arcade and things explode. 8-bit on the ground with a continue button going on there and Dynamite there in pain as well because of the explosion. So what we've been seeing now from these footages here is just different circumstances of things being infected by gems and then obviously showing the aftermath of the influence of the gems, right? People kind of go crazy and they want to fight. But another really, really important aspect that we've been seeing recently from the influence of the gems is this is not just causing people to go crazy here. It's it's also giving life to inanimate objects. A great example is the last footage that we just saw with Spike coming to life, a cactus getting life and then causing mayhem. In this most recent video, we saw an arcade machine come to life, birthing Apit, his origin story. So not only do these gems have effects to the mental, right, causing people to go insane, much like we saw with Shelly having an anger issue or Dynamite kind of going nuts as well. We saw it with Leon and Nita and Bull almost as if it's influencing things in a different way. It kind of is up in the air how the gem is going to affect you. But at the end of the day, the one thing that the gem's influence has in common amongst all the people that are infected is it's causing them to fight. They want to fight, much like we've been seeing within the game of Brawl Stars, right? Now, I'm going to be
be frank with you all, for the longest time I thought this was a coffee stain, but it's also looking kind of like the page is burnt, like some fire got into the security room. Because as you can see, when we flip the page here, we can see through this page and what's going down here on the 23rd, right? Seeing through it. So could be a coffee stain, could be fire. I don't think it really matters a whole lot. I think the biggest takeaway is that stuff is going down around this time and it's being reflected in the logs from Rick here. But we can see on this half page on November 25th of 1995, we have Rick saying, does anyone have the number for National Guard? <laughs> yeah, dude, it's starting to get to that point. We need some outward help here. Things at Star Park are not going good, that's for sure. Now, that's not the only thing that ended up happening here on November 25th. As Rick states here, he says, does anyone have the number for the National Guard? And yeah, of course, we need the help of the National Guard in this situation. Star Park is kind of unraveling, but I think seeing that he's referencing a number using the telephone is directing our attention to an update to the phone. A voicemail was left on November 25th that we can hear right now. Uh, Star Park Security, what's your emergency? Oh, oh, a man just stole my gems. Then he got this crazy look in his eye and smacked me in the head with a hammer. Okay, can you describe this gentleman? Oh, <laughs> late 60s, gray beard, ruggedly handsome, passionate about dynamite. Ooh, and award-winning toothless smile. <laughs> I'm sorry, the perp was ruggedly handsome? Oh, the perp... <laughs> I thought you asked me to describe myself. <laughs> no. Uh, what did the person who attacked you look like? Oh, way less attractive than me. Okay, sir, this number is for emergency calls only. Oh, I, I, I understood, understood. Let me try that again. Huh. I'd like to report an ugly man in Star Park that hit a very attractive-looking older gentleman. Okay, goodbye, sir. He also has a great singing voice. So in the voice recording, we have the security guard talking with Dynamite. Dynamite reporting something to the security guard and the bit of info at the very end that I think is very important. Obviously, this is kind of a joking manner. Dynamite is reporting something happening to him, but he says at the very end that the person who hit him is a less attractive individual than Dynamite, but also has a great singing voice. This could be speculated to be someone maybe like Poco, I would say, or possibly, and I know this is a bit of a stretch, but I thought it could also be Colt, seeing that Colt's whole gimmick is that he's like a pretty guy, he's good looking and stuff like that. So I think Dynamite trying to knock him down a peg, saying that he is much more attractive than the other one, could possibly be Colt. But other than that, I don't think it's that crazy important. It's just kind of giving us a different look at the craziness that's going on in Star Park. We have people acting weird, people fighting each other. It's kind of in a joking manner. Nothing's being taken super seriously with these influence of the gems, right? They're kind of in their own world. But we make our way to November 26th of 1995, an update from Rick, finally discovering what ended up happening in that last Easter egg video. Starcade is destroyed, which sucks because I have a ton of extra game tokens I forgot to use. That's not how I imagined this blowing up in my head. Moving along here to November 27th, we have Rick updating us saying, gotta remember to check the voicemail, but first, lunch. Another call out, I think, a better reminder to check the voicemail that we just ended up listening to. Basically, if you didn't read between the lines beforehand, here's another nice reminder to get that discussion between the security guard and Dynamite. But that's not the only interesting update that we've had on November 27th. We also had another Easter egg video. This one, one of my favorites so far. That's right. This is the origin story of Crow. The crows pecking at the gems. Colt runs up and Angrily firing at the crows, one is hit and falls into the cracks where all of these gems reside. We have a reaction down there, a flash of light. Cold runs away in a panic, and then we have an individual checking on these cracks with a very interesting jacket, one of which we should be able to notice, a resemblance to the main game. The arm comes up and grabs the man, pulling him down into the cracks, and that's how it ends. So this one is incredibly, incredibly interesting 
interesting. It's the origin story of Crow. Crow, literally just a bird flying around in Star Park, reacts to the gems and becomes an individual fighting in Star Park. Much like we've seen with these recent videos, these weird objects being turned into these playable characters that we know within Brawl Stars. We had 8-Bit, we had Spike, and now Crow. Super interesting. On the following day, November 28th of 1995, we have the update from Rick confirming our suspicions that this is the origin story of Crow. We have the Crow that we saw in the last footage, but this time he is wearing a jacket that we should know. He's a crow with a cool leather jacket. Now, once again, this is not the only thing that ended up happening on November 28th. We have another voicemail here to listen to. Have a listen. Star Park Security, what's your emergency? I'd like to make a report. I just shot a person with a rocket inside Star Park. Did you say you shot someone with a rocket launcher, sir? Are they dead? No, that's the problem. I shot this little cactus man right in the head with a rocket, and the weirdest thing happened. He got right back up. Watch, I'll prove it. I shot him again. <laughs> Nothing. Sir, please stop shooting him with rockets. You're right. You're right. I'm a chill. But I'm gonna try to stick a dynamite first. Come on, come on. Darn it! Now he's back up again. I'm gonna try hitting him with another rocket. Forget I called. This one I really, really enjoy. We have Brock this time talking to a security guard, nonchalantly firing rockets within Star Park at Spike, basically communicating to the security guard that the rockets aren't working. And then he tries a stick of dynamite that doesn't work on Spike. And then he shoots him again with the rocket and says to the security guard, you know what? Just forget it. I'm going to keep firing away. <laughs> Once again, I don't think a lot is coming out of these voicemails like lore wise, like they're not giving us like fun Easter eggs or anything like that. It's just showing us a different narrative, a different vantage point within Star Park through a voice, reiterating that things are going down in Star Park in a very bad way. People are shooting rockets within an amusement park for no reason, just because this spike isn't dying, dude. It's crazy, and I think another kind of cool callback to that whole notion we were discussing before, that these gems are also not allowing these brawlers or characters affected by them to die, right? This spike is taking blasts from rockets, and he's coming right back. It's super, super interesting. I love this voicemail. It's awesome. On November 29th, we have the update from Rick saying, despite the 2,537 incident reports that have been filed over the last six weeks, I am happy to report there have been zero casualties. Thank my lucky stars. I think they're really hammering home now at this point a different side effect of the gems where it's not allowing individuals to die, right? We saw dynamite blasted in the chest comes right back. We have a spike not being able to die. And now this, Rick saying that with all of these incidences, people getting shot, people getting blasted by rockets, not a single casualty has been filed at Star Park. And I think it's another great explanation as to why we're seeing these individuals who are affected by gems not age and staying the exact same way as we know and love them in the version of Brawl Stars that we play to this day in 2023, soon to be 2024. It's like one once you are affected by the gems, you are trapped in this Brawl Stars dystopian universe where they're constantly fighting, coming back to life and things like that. And it's been that same way since 1995 to this day. Super, super interesting. But then we make our way to November 30th of 1995, a very interesting day to say the least. Our update from Rick saying everything is fine. Everything is fine everything is fine. Repeating and repeating. It seems like Rick is kind of starting to go a little bit insane and I don't blame him. Maybe he's also being affected by something going on in Star Park. Wink, wink. Make sure to stay tuned. But at this time, we also got a new Easter egg video with a reoccurring character that we will see time and time again now. We have this guy with a sign saying, help. This is the very first introduction of this dude with the sign. I think once again, another iteration of things kind of going around in Star Park and it's even affecting the people who are at Star Park just visiting having a good time at an amusement park but we finally make our way to December December 1st of 1995 and this is where things start to get crazy inside of Star Park and I think mirrored here perfectly with Rick's update on this day saying or I should say screaming ah 
a very apt description of what's going down within Star Park through the lens of Rick and the guy that's watching all of this go down, right? Now, we didn't have any new Easter egg videos pop up on this day, but one of my favorite things that ends up happening on December 1st is we see the very first sign of spewed popping up. Someone made their way in the CCTV footage room and wrote, spewed on the desk. Now we don't know whether or not Rick was the one who ended up writing down spewed or someone broke into the office itself and wrote that down, but it'll be a fun reminder throughout the entirety of the remainder of this CCTV footage madness of Star Park that spewed is there. It never leaves the desk. If you guys don't know, spewed stands for Star Park Union of Distressed Employees, kind of the good guys fighting back against the bad, right? The crazy stuff going down in Star Park and the people people in control of it. That's what we think. While at the same time, we also have a daily check-in with our dude with the sign asking for help at the security camera. His sign saying, this time I'm having a below average time. But then we make our way to December 2nd with our update from Rick saying, so far we've had reports of a code 10, a 417, a 1054, three 1068s, five 1079s, and a half dozen 594s. And I'm probably going to be 86th from this job. Poor Rick, man, he's just trying to keep things together. But this won't be the only thing that we end up getting on December 2nd. We have a new Easter egg video. We have El Primo and Crow duking it out on a freaking roller coaster man they take a picture there <laughs> and then they jump off with the roller coaster bombing in the background causing havoc yet again this easter egg video i think once again just adds to the craziness that's going on within star park these gems not only are having this weird effect on individuals a ton of different effects on these people but it's also causing them to want to fight much like we do in brawl stars every single day we have the updates from that situation here in rick journal on December 3rd saying a giant crow and a man in a luchador mask just derailed the roller coaster and then high-fived at least someone still having a good time inside Star Park. Yeah, the people fighting in Star Park. They're basically fighting with no concern of what's going on around them, causing havoc within the park. They are the ones causing havoc. But before we move on from December 2nd and the situation that ended up happening, it's time for our daily check-in with the sign man saying, second worst day ever. On December 3rd, the update with the sign man, he ends up saying, where's the bathroom? This guy's constantly at that security camera needing help, right? <laughs> where's the bathroom? This is a bad day, stuff like that. But then that makes our way to December 4th, the update with Rick saying, Gail has a lot of cleaning up to do, and I think that is an understatement. <laughs> Star Park is in shambles basically at this point, but we also had an Easter egg video. This one is also really, really interesting. We have 8-Bit, Bull, El Primo, and Shelly walking down the streets of Star Park. They see a table fly out of Barley's bar, and they run in happily to join the brawl going down within the bar. Duking it out, having a good time, I would say. It seems like they enjoy fighting here, and the battle continues for quite some time. And then Barley's Bar also reaping havoc and <laughs> finds its way devastated, much like a lot of things at Star Park. So one really interesting thing from this video, Easter egg video, is the fact that it seems like they enjoy brawls. They enjoy fighting into Star Park. Obviously, because of their antics, things around them are being destroyed, right? But it's kind of that weird dichotomy that we have in the game itself, where we play the game, have a great time fighting each other, but it's just being shown in a very weird way if it's being depicted in real life, right? Update with the sign man on December 4th. He says, I want a refund. I would as well, dude. Next up, we have December 5th. The update from Rick saying, Barley Saloon is permanently closed for obvious reasons. And then a doodle of dynamite. Update with sign man. He says, the funnel cakes have gone bad on December 5th. <laughs> I don't think a lot of the actual operations at Star Park are going on right now because of havoc. Things are just slowly descending into worse and worse states as time goes on here in the December month. But then we find our way to December 6th. The update from Rick saying, to do list, call insurance company again, fill out $10,000 incident reports, 
Find new job, send out holiday card. But that's not all. We have a new Easter egg video on this day as well. We have Dynamite and Spike playing in the bumper car arena, along with other individuals there. As you can see, they're playing a bit harder than anyone else in this bumper car stadium. Everyone else is gone. It's only Spike and Dynamite. They are slowly inching their way to each other. They touch just barely, and it explodes. And... <laughs> the bumper car finds its way into uh, some sort of building. So as time goes on in these Easter egg videos, we get reassured time and time again that the antics of the infected individuals from the gems are just slowly the des destroying everything at Star Park in their own fun way, right? Oblivious to what they're actually doing. I mean, in that last one, Spike and Dynamite were just absolutely clobbering the other people driving around in the bumper cars. It's crazy. Star Park is being turned into these affected brawlers stomping grounds right just destroying the place and then to wrap up december 6th another update from the sign man saying i want a refund and i don't blame him i would want one as well turning the page to the next day december 7th at least the bumper cars are still oh boy never mind could be worse at least nobody has gotten hurt believe it or not no one has gotten hurt it's crazy. But once again, back to back days with Easter egg videos here on December 7th, we have a brand new one. This one kind of sad, if you ask me. We have Sign Man. We can finally see him saying, I want a refund. But Jackie finds his way to the Sign Man and beats him up. She goes back to her destroying Star Park. And I don't know if you guys have noticed, but Star Park is looking dreadful at this point. Absolutely dreadful. Throughout this entire recap, I haven't really been honing in on the CCTV footage that is live for us to see on a every hour basis, right? It is constantly showing us footage just because it would take a little bit too long to go over all of that as well. But you can definitely see the difference <laughs> of Star Park after the mayhem with the infected people with the gems. I mean, come on, look at the background. There is smoke, pure everywhere and destruction going on Jackie causing even more damage to the place as we find our way to December 8th saddenedly I say that the sign man no longer pops up I think Jackie took him out and it's sad I like the sign guy but we also have an update from Rick here spoke too soon sad face bad news 99% of the rides are now closed good news there's no new lines seems like pretty much so the majority of people visiting Star Park for a good time are no longer there dude and it makes a lot of sense the people infected with gems is ruining the place and is kind of turning it into the star park that we know from current day right but then we turn the page to december 9th once again another update from rick saying scary masked man equals bad sentient cat thigh equals bad sheriff also surprisingly bad why are people still paying to visit this park lol there's still people at the park it seems like but i think just not as much seeing that the rides are going Going down and absolute havoc going on here but on December 9th we also have another update Easter egg video and as you guys know the CCTV footage pretty much so ends on December 11th so we are getting closer and closer to the end but let it play we have here spike getting on a ferris wheel but spike is up to no good here ladies and gentlemen he hops on the ride itself finding his way towards a spot that you're not supposed to go He's in the middle of the Ferris wheel. He unscrews the dang thing and drives it out of the park, bro. That is not good. And as you can see, the remnants of Star Park is just not looking good whatsoever. The Ferris wheel is gone and it is rolling around. Spike is single-handedly destroying the rest of Star Park itself. Dude, this man has no chill. Spike, he's destroying everything. And this truly is where things start to go downhill. Spike is really, really causing havoc and it's not out of fun it looks like he's not like brawling with anyone he is just destroying star park for destroying star park on december 10th we have rick saying looks like the ferris wheel is now located in the town square also parts can be found in rumble jungle wild west town and outside of starcade gotta update the park map and then finally we make our way 
to the final day of updates from Easter egg videos, December 11th. This one honestly sends a chill up my spine. We have Spike after what he did with the Ferris wheel, standing in a very dystopian star park. Everything around him is in shambles, everything destroyed with a ambient glow of the gems in front of him. He slowly raises his hands up as he releases the poison gas that we know from several areas within Star Park. The showdown gas and everything else. But that's not all. From the pume of gas, we also see somewhat of a soul, like a gas cactus, leaving the ground below him. I think maybe symbolizing Spike's soul. Whatever it is, it's gas. And Spike ended up unleashing it into Star Park. And we have him teetering, losing his balance, and falls over collapsing. He continues to lay there as things truly meet their end in Star Park at the hands of Spike here at the very end, and it cuts to nothing. Like I said before, this is the final Easter egg video that we get from CCTV footage at Star Park, where the gems infecting the individuals at Star Park started off a little bit more on the lighthearted end of things, but once Jackie came in with a jackhammer, showing it to everyone else at Star Park, it's where it really started to ramp up. Things got more and more out of hand with the brawling and them fighting, but then Spike really elevates the chaos by unscrewing the ferris wheel and then at the very end unleashing poison gas on everyone in star park it seems leaving it a barren wasteland we all thought up until this point spike was the good guy the spy the leader of spewed potentially but it seems like he was the one that truly caused its end and as we wrap up this craziness with the cctv footage we have a few entries from rick taking a look at the last entry from Rick here on December 11. Cactus Man has been standing in the same creepy position for 10 hours now. So there's that. This is my last entry. Park is on fire. Most people working here have gone insane. I'm going to try to make a break for it. Wish me luck. And this sadly will be the last time that we hear from Rick and I'm sorry to say that Rick's story doesn't end on a good note. But we do have a journal entry on December 12th saying in different writing in cursive and in it looks like a different writing utensil. Security room 2E. Everything is fine. Star Park is a complete success and has no problems or liabilities. Don't believe any other reports. They are all lies. Do not watch the tape. Eat some cake and enjoy happy anniversary and what we see at this time is a complete craziness going on within the security room it looks like someone took over the security room other than rick and threw a party for the anniversary of star park and brawl stars this was pretty much so the theory that was running in the community that on the anniversary date that the CCTV footage would come to an end, and indeed it did. We had the celebration of the anniversary one day before where it looked really, really nice. It was all decorated, but now we have this in its current state where we can see it to this day on December 19th, still not in operation. The CCTV footage is cut off to this day and we leave on a very somber note. The final thing, written in the security log is this, RT, rules. There was a really fun theory that was thrown around inside the community a long time ago, and that was that Rick very well could have turned into RT. And as to not try to spoil this outcome here, Rick turning into RT, I made sure not to update you guys on what the actual room itself looked like towards the very end of this madness. On December 6th, nothing really crazy was going on in the room itself, but then on December 7th, we had an update. There was a gem placed within the security room itself. On December 8th, there was a little bit of an update, a fire going on in the trash can. On December 9th, December 10th, and December 11th, nothing significant changed. December 12th, the happy anniversary banners were placed up there. And then December 13th, we see it in its current state that we know and love. But the reason that Rick ended up turning into RT, which we theorized to happen way, way back in the day, was because of that gem that was placed 
placed within the security room, turning him into RT, the playable character that we can play with in Brawl Stars right now. So unfortunately, Rick didn't make it out and now is trapped within Star Park with everyone else brawling out to this day in soon to be 2024. And that's how it ends. That's how we wrap things up with the Star Park CCTV footage. Not a whole lot of room to speculate. I really wanted, honestly, this whole experience to turn into possible content coming out of it, kind of like what we were seeing with the WKBRL live stream. But it seems the majority of this entire event was just showing lore, backstories of characters, how Star Park turned into the version of Star Park that we know of to this day. And that was truly the purpose of the Star Park CCTV footage. You never know, it could be a potential in the very near future that some small details and Easter eggs might turn into something significant like update Easter eggs in the future that we might be able to draw upon, but we'll have to leave it at that. There was a lot that we need to uncover here in this episode today, but I hope I did it justice. An absolutely insane experience covering this CCTV footage and a very, very fun time within Brawl Stars. If you ask me, I will be remembering this quite fondly. And at the very end of things, it is a nice way to get an explanation of lore. We have this as a baseline, something to draw upon if we need more explanation about lore at Star Park. And I do want to say to wrap things up in this video, it's not completely gone. We can still access the CCTV footage room and we still can enter this with the camera in the background, right? But we'll have to wait and see once this camera goes away, it will be officially over. But yeah, be sure to let me know what you guys are thinking about all of this craziness. It kind of ended on a very somber, sad note, if you ask me, with Rick not being being able to get away and spike whatever he did there unleashing the gas it was kind of weird and sad but yeah thank you all for watching we'll be talking super super soon and yeah adios everyone